In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a good mitral inflow trace in your feline patients and how to perform your measurements from them. Getting a nice on axis image, using colour to guide me, putting my pulse wave Doppler gate at the tips of the mitral valve leaflets in their open position, and using my enter or update key to reposition it. I get my E and my A waves. By adjusting your sweep speed, you can make it easier for yourself. So it may look like this when you first get your trace. That's very difficult to measure from. So make sure you increase that sweep speed. Notice that my sample gate is nice and small. You don't want a really large sample gate or you get a very noisy signal. In cats, it should really be as small as your machine will allow. The measurements I have taken here are the peak E wave velocity, the peak A wave velocity, the duration of the A wave and the deceleration slope of the E wave. But all you really need to do in a basic assessment of diastolic function is get your peak E and A waves. So you would go to your peak E, place it at the peak of the E wave, peak A, place it at the peak of the A wave, and your machine is going to calculate an EA ratio for you. You can look up what normal EA ratios are, but also you can actually use your eyes most of the time. If the E wave is taller than the A wave, usually that's a sign of normal diastolic function. If that didn't match what you were seeing clinically, if you saw thick walls and a dilated left atrium, well then you might suspect maybe pseudo normalization, and that's where some of your other measurements would be important. But in this particular cat, everything looked normal and the mitral inflow pattern also looks normal. If this cat's A wave had been higher than her E wave, well then that would be a sign that this cat probably has diastolic dysfunction and I would definitely want to be taking other measures at that point. Along with my 2D imaging, I'd want to be looking at tissue Doppler as well and making sure that confirmed my findings of the mitral inflow pattern. Assessing diastolic function with Doppler is not an easy topic. There are so many different measurements you can make, but I would stick to just your peak E and your peak A if you are new to this and also really get familiar with your mitral inflow patterns by eye. And also matching that with what you see on your echocardiogram and what you know clinically about that patient. You'll soon start to notice patterns and you'll start to know what your mitral inflow should look like on your patient before you even take it. Once you're confident with that, then you can progress to doing more advanced measurements. Doing them too early can be quite overwhelming and can also lead you to the wrong conclusions. As this was a cat, a lot of the controls in this video were mentioned very quickly. If you'd like a slower, more detailed explanation, check out the resources in the description below.